Hey, what's up? Welcome to Tutorial Thursdays. This one was requested and it is this effect. Yeah, me punching a tree. I just started boxing. And as you can tell, I don't have any form. I don't know anything about boxing, but I was excited. And I was like, let me just do a VFX of me punching a palm tree. And it's an interesting effect. A lot of the techniques in it can be applied for a ton of stuff. So I'm going to do this quick breakdown as was requested. Leave a comment below. I read every single comments. And if you make suggestions on what you want to see next, I will probably get around making it if it's interesting and useful for everyone. So there we go. Let's jump into it. Now, before jumping into the video, I quickly want to shout out my packs available at chrisclark.com. If you're a filmmaker that edits or does VFX, I really think you will find a lot of value in them, and it also helps out the channel a lot. Made them for you, check them out if you want to. Now, let's jump in. Okay, so starting off in Premiere, you want to replace the clip with an After Effects composition, name it, and now we can get started in After Effects. So for some reason, we have here the audio and the video split into two tracks. And as you can see, there's some keyframes here for the time remapping that I did in Premiere Pro. Plenty of tutorials on that out there. I have some on my channel, but let's focus on this punching sequence here. So as I make my way forward, you can see I kind of, I don't just make contact with the palm tree. I actually put my fist in front of it so that I can move forward a little bit. So the next step from here is to rotoscope the palm tree. So I'm gonna duplicate the layer and I'm just creating a very rough mask of the trunk of the palm tree. And then from there, I'm gonna go under time and freeze frame so that it doesn't move. However, we see a little bit of a glitch here and that is because of the time remapping. So we wanna undo that real quick and we wanna go under layer and pre-compose the layer and we actually want to make sure that we are pre-composing it and moving all of the attributes into the new composition. From there, we can then freeze frame and now everything should be set to go. Next thing, we want to adjust the pivot point so you can hit Y on your keyboard and that'll adjust the pivot point, which will be handy for later once we animate the rotation. So now we can see that we have this floating duplicate frozen element, which is great. Now all we have to do is realign it with the point of contact so that we can animate it from there. And I'm going to hit P, R, and S on my keyboard, animate all those keyframes from that point forward. And I'm just going to kind of create a very rough animation of this portion of the palm tree, just kind of flying out in the direction and rotation of, of the punch. Now, this is going to take a lot of tweaking, and I'm just going to start with uh, just a very rough idea of the animation so that we can move forward. But keep in mind that obviously this is going to need uh, quite a bit of work. Uh, and that's something that we're going to keep tweaking throughout this uh, process. Next, I'm going to hit shift command D on a Mac and shift control D on a PC. And that's going to split the layer so we can just have it start right where the punch happens. And of course, you want to kind of retime it and make sure that it's uh, timed somewhat right. So I'm going to solo these elements because next we're going to just focus on the arm. So I'm going to duplicate that layer and I'm just going to rotoscope and keyframe and animate those rotoscope points to kind of follow my arm movement here because we want this arm to be in front of the clean plate and the palm tree and all the other effects that we're about to create. Now we want to duplicate the background layer once again and this time we kind of want to create that clean plate so that we can hide the, the tree trunk behind my punch so that it can disappear and it can just be replaced by the flying element that we just created. So I'm gonna just create a simple mask and I'm gonna find a spot here that can be something that makes sense to be placed behind the palm tree trunk. So you can see here that we have another umbrella by my side and it, you know it can be a nice easy cheat to just kind of duplicate the, the second umbrella and use that space to cover up the tree trunk. So you can see that it kind of works already but we're gonna have to take this a step further, obviously. So first of all, I'm gonna adjust the mask and push it up a bit so it can hide the full trunk. You can see that that's working pretty well. It's already giving a sense of what we're gonna be doing. But of course, we have to make it stick to the scene with some tracking and adjust the masking just a little bit. So, so the next thing that we wanna do is exactly that. We wanna track our background scene so we can have things stick. So I'm gonna select the background once again. I'm gonna pre-compose it with moving all attributes into the new composition so that we don't have to worry about any weirdness caused by the time remapping. And then from there, we're gonna apply a 3D camera tracker effect and that's gonna analyze our scene and we're gonna be able to create a bunch of 3D layers from that. So the very next thing is to select some points in the background, so essentially where we wanna have that element stick. So in this case, we wanna create a clean plate that takes care of our background, so we wanna get points that are present in our background. 
and we're going to create a 3D null and camera from that. And this isn't just going to give us the information uh, of a camera in our scene, of a 3D camera, but it's also going to allow us to get those specific coordinates of where that background is in our scene. So we can go back to our clean plate layer, make that layer 3D, and from there we can paste the information from the position coordinates of that null that we created so that we know that that clean plate is exactly where that null is in our space, meaning where our background or this brick wall is. And then of course you wanna make sure that you are scaling that layer and refitting it over the part of the scene that you want so that it matches up right. And you can see that that solves a ton of issues. We have our basic rough animation and we have the background showing through, which is honestly most of the work being done already. So from there, you just wanna adjust the mask to avoid any sort of pops from you know the clean plate showing up and the element disappearing. So you wanna make sure that that is smooth. So just make some adjustments with the mask. And honestly, now I think it's a good time to make some adjustments for this keyframe animation here so that the trunk actually lands on the ground and maybe slides out of view or something like that. Again, we're gonna be tweaking this quite a bit, but another good thing to do is to adjust the keyframe velocity and easy ease them. And then you can go into this graph editor and you can actually adjust the curve of the speed and the velocity of all these keyframes to give it a more natural feel. So you can see here, as I'm speeding through this, I'm doing a ton of tweaks. This is the trickiest part to just get the animation looking right. And next, I just wanna add the top of this palm tree and I'm kinda doing a very easy cheat. I just had to browse for ever to find a palm tree be cut down uh, on a YouTube video. And of course, you wanna make sure that you're getting proper footage royalty free and all that, but this was the only thing I could find, just downloaded it from YouTube. And for the sake of this tutorial, it's gonna work out fine. And I'm just adding a very rough mask. Um, you know, you could go blade by blade and make this super accurate, but honestly, that just sounds like hell. So I just gave it a very rough mask and animated as this uh, top of this palm tree is falling down. And it's always good to use a real element because you're gonna get the real motion uh, and it's always gonna look way better than any kind of CG element, especially for something that has collision, something that's falling and something as intricate as the top of a palm tree. So of course, we're gonna need to animate that top to sort of match the movement of the trunk as it's being hit and it's uh, moving you know, away from camera. Applying motion blur also helps a ton. And of course, going back and uh, editing those keyframes in, in the motion graph and making it look as natural as possible is gonna take some tweaking, but the more time you spend here, the more realistic your animation is gonna look. Now here you can add a rough and edges effect. And this is kind of, again, another cheat to uh, you know make the edges of this mask a little bit rougher to have a little bit more detail uh, to sort of hide the fact that we didn't rotoscope every individual blade of this palm tree and every single detail, but it's just giving it a little bit of texture in the edges so that it does seem that we did a bunch more work than really just this rough mask. Now, as a bonus here, I'm just gonna jump forward a little bit, but I just essentially duplicated the layer, added a bunch of adjustments to that duplicate and darkened it to fake some shadows. Now, another thing to uh, keep in mind is that we want the bottom trunk in our scene to actually be on top of the palm tree. So I'm creating a solid and this solid is gonna act as a mask. I'm gonna have to make it 3D. And then of course, if we're making it 3D, you have to go back to your background layer that has the 3D camera tracker information, create a new null that matches the position of that bottom piece of that trunk, and then paste it into that solid. And of course, just like we did before, scale it up, reposition it, and uh, maybe adjust the mask a little bit. And now we can essentially choose the alpha information to be looking at that solid so that the palm tree now is uh, is appearing to be behind that trunk. So of course you can adjust the mask a little bit and there we go. That's a very simple way to add a foreground element so that all this stuff is going behind it. Now some extra little bit of detail, you can apply some optics compensation to the top of this palm tree so that you know, you're know you getting a little bit of distortion from the wide lens just to um, sort of make it a little bit more integrated with the camera lens and the scene. And there we go, we have this very rough animation. It is very rough, but uh, again, the thing that's gonna help you out here a lot is adding elements such as this uh, splintered texture that I just tracked in 
to the top of that bottom trunk that's being split open. And then of course, a bunch of debris elements. I mean, the main thing that you want to really do here is hide the the fact that it's a pretty rough animation it's all very you know 2d stuff and for the sake of brevity i don't want to show you dragging in all these elements but essentially it's repeating the same steps that you just saw and adding dust shock waves and all this other stuff to enrich the scene and distract away from the the pretty basic animation that we did for the palm tree so okay very specific effect but as you saw with a ton of techniques and applications that can be used for a lot. Also, if you want VFX assets or editing assets, I have a ton of packs. I don't know why I said that. I have three packs. They're not a ton, but they have a ton of elements in each pack. They are really loaded with really useful stuff that I used in almost every project. Check out the link in the description, chrisgarth.com slash marketplace. With that being said, I will catch you tomorrow with our regular show and we're going to start it all again next week. All right. Peace. Oh,